So this is a video I never thought I would be making this season. Are the Utah Jazz for real? Well, as of Tuesday, November 8th, the Utah Jazz are 9-3 and and the first seed in the West. We're about 15% completed with the regular season, so I feel like this is a good time to talk about the Jazz. I like to normally start evaluating teams about 25% through a season, but I'm going to make an exception for this Jazz team. In this video, I want to talk about why the Jazz have been so good, is it sustainable, their roster, Danny Ainge, and more. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The Utah Jazz have come out the gate scorching hot offensively. They are averaging 118.3 points a game, which is the second most in the West, .2 behind the Pelicans. Larry Markinen is in a perfect situation with the Jazz. He's really flourishing in this Jazz offense that allows him to get a lot of shots up. And speaking of shots, Jordan Clarkson is off to a great start of the season as well. He's averaging 18.3 points a game as a starter. We have seen him come off the bench in the past, but this season he has been starting and he has made the Jazz starting lineup very dangerous. It is hard to defend a five-man unit that can all shoot. The athletic Jordan Vanderbilt has been a nice addition to the lineup, averaging 9 points a game on over 50% from three on very few attempts though. Defensively, the Jazz have been about average, but they have been relying mainly on their offense to carry the load so far. I need to show more love to Colin Sexton, because I only glanced over him briefly. Sexton was on the trade block for most of last year once Darius Garland started to take the next step. With the emergence of Garland, I feel like people forgot just how good Sexton could be. I mean, this is a player that averaged just under 25 points a game at the age of 22. He's already played in more games this year than he did last year, and he's averaging almost 15 points a game and shooting 38% from three. He's a big reason the Jazz are playing so well. Should we expect the Jazz to play at this level all year? I'm going to say no. Look, let's be honest. Going into the season, a lot of people, myself included, viewed the Jazz as a tanking team. They traded away their two best players in the offseason, which is why this 9-3 start has been so surprising. The Utah Jazz are taking advantage of home cooking. They are 5-0 and at home. Danny Ainge has done a good job of rebuilding this roster. Not only did he get a boatload of picks from Mitchell and Gobert, but he did a very underrated job of getting back a mix of young talent and veterans and trades. In those two trades, Danny Ainge got back Laurie Markin, Colin Sexton, Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, who eventually got moved to acquire THT and Stanley Johnson, Walker Kessler, and Jared Vanderbilt. And last but not least, the Jazz also acquired Kelly Olenek for Bogdanovich. Olenek is always a solid piece who can come off the bench or start and hit threes. Mike Conley, Vanderbilt, and Kessler have been great defensively so far this year. This team is really starting to shape into form. Obviously, those names aren't as big as Mitchell and Gobert, but that is an amazing job by Ainge to regroup cheap talent for guys who didn't want to be there. It is not very often that you see a young head coach in the NBA, yet alone succeeding. Well, Will Hardy is doing just that. When the Jazz announced that they were hiring Will Hardy, I didn't really have too much of an opinion on the move. I figured this was just a move by Ainge to bring in a familiar coach. They both were together in Boston in the past. Hardy so far in the young season has done a great job of creating a positive culture for the Jazz players. Hardy has pushed all the right buttons so far and the young Jazz team has bought in. The veterans have also done a great job of showing support to the coach. This always makes things easier in the locker room. Okay, so should we expect the Jazz to play at this level all season? Not to rain on the parade of Jazz fans, I'm going to say no. Now, that doesn't mean that the Jazz are going to be a bad team. I still think the Jazz could be a playoff team this season. It's a very long season, and outside of the top eight on this roster, I don't think the Jazz are super deep. I don't anticipate them having no injuries this season either. I want to see how well they play when they have to face adversity. I'm really liking what I see so far from this team. Adam Silver has made it really hard to tank in the NBA in 2022. You aren't guaranteed the best pick percentage if you are the worst team anymore. Going into the season, I'm sure a lot of Jazz fans would have been okay with tanking and trying to get Victor Wembanyama. If you are a Jazz fan watching this video, please let me know below if you still want to try and tank for him or if you just want to ride this hot streak out and see where the season takes you. I know as a Sixers fan who went through the process, the feeling of winning is fun and amazing. Nobody likes to lose game after game, even if you believe it is for a bigger purpose. The future is extremely bright, Jazz fans. Enjoy this hot start to the season because at some point, you have to figure the Jazz will cool off a little bit. 
but until then, enjoy the ride. And hey, if you made it this far, thank you for watching, and please leave the video a like and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. It will really help out the channel big time. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.